Hey everybody, Gary with Basecamp Trading. Today we're going to do a video on how to set up a Unirenko chart on NinjaTrader. The first thing you do is go to your dashboard and then up here in the left hand corner we're going to select File, New, Chart. So we're going to select our chart, which is going to be a crude oil chart. In here, this is our data series, and this is where we select what type of bar we want to use. For example, you have a daily bar, weekly, Kagi, Ranko, minute, etc. We use the Unirenko bar. That's a free bar out there it's an open source bar you can get it off the ninja ecosystem or google it it's it's all over the place out there it's a common free bar um, for ninja trader we're going to leave our chart as a default chart and this is just a regular everyday unirenko chart this is what a unirenko chart looks like with nothing else on it the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our indicators and we are going to select the Ichimoku cloud. Mine's labeled a little different, but it's the Ichimoku cloud and it's just the standard everyday cloud that you use any day. We're going, but we only use the cloud itself. We don't use any of the lines. We make those transparent. We make the Kijun, the Cinco Span, and the Tinkinson. We make those all transparent, and we are only using the cloud itself. So there's the cloud all by itself. And then the next thing we're going to do is go back into indicators, and we're going to do what we call the Smooth 50. And what that is is a 50 EMA of a 50 EMA. And so we're going to go in here and we're going to select EMA. And then we come over to the right side, see where it says input series. Let's see if we can make this just a little bigger. The input series, you go to the far right, click, and it's going to give you a drop down menu. Click on the drop down menu, and you'll see another drop down menu, the indicators. Open up the indicators drop down menu and then scroll down to EMA. You're gonna select EMA. You're gonna make it a 50 period also. So now you have the 50 period EMA of a 50 period EMA. Hit OK. Now you can change the colors. Go over here to the EMA, hit the drop down menu. You can click on the right hand side. That's gonna give you a drop down menu for colors. I like mine to be magenta. So I'm going to come I'm going to scroll down here, find magenta. I'm going to select that as my color. I'm going to change the dash style again, select to the right gives you a drop down menu. I make mine a dash and then on the line, you do the same thing, go to the right side, gives you a drop down menu and I make that a hash. I like the width to be 5. And so I'm going to hit OK. And now I have a 50 EMA of a 50 EMA on my chart. The next thing we're going to do is put a 50 SMA on here. Simple moving average. So we scroll down to simple moving average. Which is right here. And that's going to be a 50 period simple moving average. I like my color to be cyan. So we're going to scroll down here and find cyan. Right there. I like it to be just solid. I want it to be a line and I like the width to be a five. And the other thing we want to make sure that we do is up here we have a choice for calculate on bar close. We want to make that false. We don't want to wait for the bar to close as it's calculating the SMA. So we're going to make that false. We hit OK. And now we have the 50 SMA on our chart. 
The next thing we're going to do is put a 34 EMA on our chart. So we're going to come down here to an EMA. We're going to make it a 34 period. I like mine to be yellow, so I'm going to select yellow. Right there. I like the width to be a four. I make it a four. And the same thing, we do not want to calculate on bar close. We want that to be false. So we make that false. And now we have a 34 EMA on our chart. So now we have a 50 SMA and a 34 EMA on our chart. The next thing we do, and that's going to be everything that is free available on any platform you can get at any time. Now we're going to add some base camp trading indicators on here. The first one I'm going to put on here is going to be MQ Trender Momentum Trender Pro, which is right here. I use the default settings on that. Um, if you want your candles, your up candles to be hollow, you can make this true. I want my up candles and dang down candles to be solid. So I make this false for mine. Now I changed the colors a little bit. The default colors are going to be um, green for up bars, blue for flat bars or neutral bars. The trail stop feature to the upside default I believe is going to be yellow the cell color is red trail stop feature to the downside is yellow I change mine a little bit I like my up bars to be blue so I can change the colors you can go in here change colors no problem I like mine to be blue the flat bars I make them white and then the trail stop bar for the upside I make magenta the down bars I make it red and the trail stop bar for the downside, I make it yellow. And you can make it whatever color you want, but those are the colors that I like to use. And you can see once I put that on there, now MQ Momentum Trender Pro is coloring my bars. The white bars are neutral, blue bars are our up bars, the magenta trail stop for the upside is right there. Again, white bars. And you can see for the down bars, we have red. The trail stop bar is yellow to the downside. And again, make them any color you want. This is my choice of colors. Then the next thing we're going to put on our charts is going to be MQ momentum. Again, we come down to our indicators. We select MQ momentum. And we put that on our chart. And down below here, we have MQ Momentum. This is our momentum indicator. And we like this. This is, um, in our opinion, better than a MACD. It's more responsive. And this is the momentum indicator that we like to use. The next thing we're going to put on our charts is going to be the MQ MZT indicator. And that is actually based off of MQ momentum. We're going to select that. I changed mine a little bit. Instead of the cross, I changed mine. I leave the box yellow. This is for when the fast line crosses the zero line. But I, instead of a cross, I make mine a block. And I make it a little bigger. For me personally, it's easier to see that way. And that's that's all that is. And then I go here on the uh, fast line to the downside. Same thing. I make it a block. I make it a three. And then the slow line is like a light gray color. Same thing. I make it a box or block, I'm sorry, I make it a three. And then the final slow line 
cross to the upside. Same thing, leave it light gray. I make mine a block. And I make it a three. And for me personally, that's just easier to see. You can make it any color you want, any shape you want, any size you want. If you want your uh, ups and downs to be different colors, you can change that, change it whatever way you like. This is the settings that I personally use. And what the MQMZT is doing is when the yellow block is above the line, that means the fast line on MQ momentum is crossing the zero line to the downside. When the light gray box is above, that means the slow line is crossing the zero line to the downside. And the zero line is the line that the histogram goes above and below. That's the zero line on MQ momentum. And of course, it's just the opposite when the fast and slow line are crossing the zero line to the upside. The boxes will be underneath. The arrows indicate when we make what we call a zero line touch. So for example, right here, the slow line came down to the zero line, started to head back up, and it painted a gray arrow. Right here, the fast and slow line came to the zero line, made a touch, and we're headed back up, and so it painted both arrows. So that's our MQMZT indicator. The next indicator that I like to use is going to be the MQ power lines indicator. And by the way, MZT, I use default settings as well. And for the power lines, I like MQ power lines, which is this indicator right here. Again, I change the length. You can leave it 50, that's a, that's a good one. I personally like 150, so I set mine at 150. Again, set it whatever you want. I use all the rest as the default settings. And the power lines, you can see this red power line right here, another red one right here. And what that's doing is that's indicating a significant area of support. We've had at least two pivots, maybe more, touch that area, making that a significant area of support. You see the same thing here in crude. We're in the live market, as you can tell, but we're actually forming the same thing. We have a significant line of support right here. Um, when the lines are on the upside, they'll be green. And those are lines of resistance. You can see this was a significant area of resistance. And that's our MQ power line indicator. And then the only other indicator that I put on my charts is going to be the MQ trend indicator. And you can use this if you want to or not. I, I don't trade this really for the most part. I just use it as uh, area of significant support and resistance. And I'll show you what the MQ trend looks like. We come down here to MQ trend and that'll be that indicator right there and you can see these are the trend dots and you can see price tends to react to the trend dots this move up came right up to mq trend and it stalled often price will stall at mq trend sometimes it will stall and continue sometimes it stalls and reverses this particular case it reversed and you can see the same thing here. We came up to the MQ trend dots, stalled and reversed. Came down here to MQ trend support. Price stalled here, but did not reverse. Actually pushed through a little bit. And you'll find that, you know, all the way through. Here's another good example. This down move came right down to the MQ trend dots, stalled and reversed back to the upside. Came down, stalled, reversed, and then finally broke through. And that's kind of the pattern that you'll see with MQ trend dots. And those are all the indicators that we use in the room. And that's how you set them up on NinjaTrader.